In this video, I am going to show you how I do a full dimensional color. Um, some people call it a balayage. It really isn't a balayage. Balayage is more open air painting with no foils. So this gives a balayage effect inside a foil. So you'll see people calling it foilage um, just to get rid of the confusion. I just call all of my colors dimensional colors if I'm doing any type of dimension in there. And then I'll write in my notes what I'm doing, whether I'm foiling, whether I'm, you know, hand painting, whatever I'm doing. So anyway, on this client, we are doing gray coverage and I am doing a full dimensional color so that I can give her some nice pops of caramel in there. Um, her ends have faded really pretty and she's been loving them. Uh, but I wanted to just bring up a little bit of that dimension that had faded on the ends up towards her root a little bit more and give her a nice gloss over everything once we were done. So here I'm going up either side. I think total maybe I had four foils on each side. Um, I did this side where she parts to a tiny bit heavier. So through her, um, that kind of swoop that comes down on this side, I wanted her to have some nice uh, dimension in there. So this side might've had five foils. Um, I'm using a board. I do love using boards. You don't have to use a board for this type of technique. I do it because it really helps me um, blend the color really nicely. And so I don't have to do as much back combing. I'm keeping the back combing pretty soft in this look because I am going to go back and do all over color. So I didn't want to have uh, too much um, teasing right there by the root. So um, if you ever want to see me do a video like more slow motion of how I use the board, um, because the steps can get confusing for people um, as they're learning it, just let me know in the comments. I'm happy to do that. Um, I really have loved it. And sometimes I'll, I don't use it. It just depends. But I really do like the effect that it gives. It's soft and it's easy to apply the color and it's really easy to saturate the hair. So I love that. So I think I had about four foils on either side through the back, just slices, back combing, and then applying. There was Ashley saying hi. Um, and then I'm going to work my way up to the top, and I think I did two foils through the crown. And for those ones, they were not slices. I did a weave through those ones, um, and you'll see as I get to the center that I, I just took maybe like a, a dip this, the weaving comb maybe three times. And just so it's soft, but she still has some dimension coming down through the crown. You definitely don't have to fold the foils like this. You could just place another foil on top. I just like to fold them in thirds when I'm doing any type of foilage type technique. Um, it works great for me. I really make sure that I don't um, do a, a sharp crease when I'm folding it so I'm not pushing any of that bleach off the hair. So that's the only thing. If you're nervous that you're going to push the bleach off the hair or create dark spots, just uh, lay another foil on top and fold the sides. And if you're worried about any bleach coming out the bottom, you can do one little fold on the bottom too. And so there's really not a necessarily a right or wrong on this. I just like to fold in thirds. Uh, so here I am going in with her all over color. Um, she gets, I believe, a uh, level one. And it's just a level one neutral. Sometimes we'll add like a blue tone to it or a red tone to it just so that as it fades, you see some of that pop through. Um, right now we're just doing a neutral. Um, but I know a lot of brands will say you don't need to add colors, you know, down or tones down past like a level three. But I do find even on a level one, the tones can add some something fun, um, you know, a little shimmer in the sun. And she likes that. So, um, you know, don't don't be afraid to customize even those darker tones. And so excuse the back shot. And then today, we in this particular day, we were all wearing pink. It's October. Um, I thrifted this sweater, but I ended up really not liking it, so I gave it to Ashley. It looked way cuter on her. So as I'm doing this um, retouch, this um, 
color retouch. I'm just taking little sections and then I'm making sure that I'm getting nice, uh, nice and saturated in between the foils. It's really easy when you're doing foil work to miss pieces as you're doing a retouch in between. So just be really tedious, really careful. Go back over your sections, make sure you didn't miss anything. And um, sometimes if you do have foils up to the root, like a traditional foil that you're coloring in between, you may need like five extra grams because you tend to use a little extra color. Um, you wouldn't think that you would because some of that hair is foiled away, but to make sure that it's nice and saturated between the foils, you want to have just that little bit extra um, wiggle room to uh, make sure that that color is pushed up in there. And so I'm finishing up the other side and make sure when you're done doing any type of color application that you always keep a towel there that's wetted down on the corner and go around her hairline and clean it up. And that's going to avoid a lot of staining. So I always like that's part of my routine as I mix up color, I bring over the towel and I just clean up as I go as I see any marks on her face. All right, let's pull out these foils. Oh, the color looks so good. So just a, a note about her hair. Her hair has never lifted for me ever past like a I don't know, maybe like a four bright red. And so that's what we were anticipating to this time and open it up and her hair was happy to lift. So uh, that was pretty cool. And um, I think there maybe is a possibility that she was, she was going through some um, medical things for a while. And I don't know if that was affecting her hair and its lifting ability. Um, and so she has um, been healthy now for a couple years and so her hair totally reacted different and it was really fun that we were able to get her so light because we've never been able to do that before so we were both very excited so i'm going through i'm shampooing really well making sure all of that color is off i also like to make the shampoo really relaxing um, anytime i'm doing any type of work at the bowl keeping her hairline clean. I just always want to make sure that they're feeling taken care of. Like I'm not just being messy and splashing things around. I want it to look and feel just very intentional. Like I'm intentional about everything that I do. So um, I'm gentle, but I get, you know, I make sure that it's nice and relaxing and um, feels really good for them. So I'm going and mixing up my toner now. And most of the time, I would say 99% of the time I root their their hair um, with a root shadow and then blend it down to a toner on the ends this time i didn't do that um it really seemed like it was blended really well um, but that always doing a root shadow always gets rid of any like banding that you might have any spotting that you might have when you're doing your blend and so it's just a great way to create a beautiful seamless look and um i probably will do it on her next time just because i love the look so much but this this way turned out beautiful too so um on this one i'm just doing one solid color all the way down and um i'm also combing it through and this is the the professional Epic wet brush, I think is what it's called. Um, if you ever want me to link anything, I totally can. Um, this brush is fantastic. It's really easy to clean after you've used it as a shampoo bowl. Um, so I love it for detangling, especially if you've done any type of backcombing or anything like that. It's a great brush. All right, we're back at the chair. I'm going to apply some leave-in conditioners, a moisturizer, um, a smoothing product. And I think I also did like a, a styling cream uh, just for some soft hold. And we're going to go ahead and blow dry and style. I'm so excited to see this finished result. So remember when you're blow drying to get the hair about 75 to 80% dry with your pre-drying technique. And that is just taking the hair and just using your fingers and just getting it, um, you know, pretty much rough dried. You still want to, even though you're rough drying, make sure that you're angling that blow dryer root to end. You want to be closing down that cuticle. Remember we've talked before in other videos that the cuticle lays like shingles on a roof. So if you're pointing that air at the hair or up the hair strand, all you're doing is creating frizz, opening up that cuticle, creating a dull, unfinished, um, not smooth look. So even if you're trying to do volume, you still want to blow dry that hair root to end. So you're going, you're angling that air towards her ends to close down that cuticle layer. And that's going to create that softness, that shine, um, and that very smooth finished look. So I'm getting the hair pretty much dry. Um, and then you'll see me that I'll take the round brush and start round brushing her hair.
Okay, so now I'm round brushing her hair and you'll notice as I come around, I know I'm blocking the camera again. Um, I just have it set up on a tripod and so I don't spend any time trying to move that camera around when I'm focusing on my client. They have my 100% attention, but um, I'm still angling that hair down. So I'm not pointing the air at the brush. I'm pointing the air down over the top of the brush. So it's just hitting the hair, but not the brush. And that's going to save your client's hair from getting damaged, too dried out, and it's going to keep it really smooth. If I hold that blow dryer and angle it perpendicular to the brush, meaning that the nozzle is pointing at the brush, you're going to end up with frizz. So make sure that you don't do that. Make sure that you're always pointing that air down over the hair. Also, on a side note, I am wearing my most favorite sandals in the whole world, my huaraches. Um, they are not authentic, and I wish they were because I'm like only like an hour and a half from Mexico, so I have no excuse not to have actual authentic ones. Um, but when I bought these, I was in a hurry and couldn't order them like online or from any of the Etsy shops or anything like that. So I found these ones and I seriously love them. They are so comfortable. They're made by Bear Paw actually. And um, they have a few different colors as well. And I live in them. I wear them pretty much every day. They're my favorite. And the last step for this look is the curling iron. I do not put my curling iron very hot. At the most, I usually keep them between 320 and 350. And I feel like that gives a really nice look. And I do the same thing for my own hair. 320 to 350, it um, stops the hair from burning. And also, I'm able to restyle it each day without it being like overstyled. I don't know if you've ever tried to curl your hair a few different times and all of a sudden it just won't curl anymore. Keeping it at a lower temperature will really help it be able to be restyled day after day so you can get several days out of a, a look and um, it just stops the hair from burning. And keep in mind too, when you're using really hot tools on your hair or a client's hair, it can fade color. It can burn it, of course, it can dry it out. It saps moisture from the hair. And so keeping it on a lower temperature is going to keep your color fresher. It's gonna keep the moisture in the hair and not cause any damage. So there's no reason to have any of our irons up at like 400 or you know higher. Um, those temperatures were made in a lot of these tools when keratin treatment started becoming popular because like flat irons being at 450, um, it locks in some of these professional treatments. So for us at home or for just a styled look on our client, we really don't need to be in those higher temperatures. So really make sure that you're checking the temps on your irons, um, any of your hot tools and keeping them at a good reasonable um, temperature so you're not hurting or harming your hair. And we're finished. I show her the back always. And here is the finished result. I forgot to take it in landscape mode. So sorry for the little thin picture, but um, I really, I'm really happy with the way it came out. It gave her some really pretty pops of color and I think it's going to fade really nice. Thanks for watching.